Police and crime commissioners will pick the chief constable, decide on the priorities for the force and help set the budget. But they won't be in charge of the police on the streets. That'll be left to experienced officers. The commissioner will listen to victims of crime when setting policy, and it's hoped this will give you a greater say in how your force is run. It replaces the current system of an authority made up of councillors and independents. So who's standing? Anyone's allowed, so long as you've not been convicted of a criminal offence that could have landed you a prison sentence. There's plenty of politicians from Labour and the Conservatives, whose idea it all is. The Lib Dems don't agree with it, but there are some of them standing, and a few smaller parties and independents. There have been complaints that it's too expensive to stand. Just to enter will cost you a whopping £5,000. That shouldn't be a problem for them once they've been elected. Salaries are expected to be between £65,000 and £100,000. But one problem is that not many people know what they are, or that there's an election coming in the first place. Last week, the Electoral Reform Society said these elections are in danger of turning into a farce. Turnout could be as low as 20%. The Home Secretary says there'll be a big campaign about it. There will be some work being done by the Home Office, obviously neutral in, in terms of not referring to any candidates, but just about what the role is and what the elections are about. But will people bother to turn out for something they don't know much about? It doesn't mean they're not bothered about crime, just perhaps that they've never really thought about the way the police are run. They may have a view on a politician running their force, and that might be what's putting them off. This is BBC Three Counties Drive. So let's introduce the uh, candidates to you. Uh, we are just waiting for Sandra Glenn, the independent, to join us. So she'll join us very, very shortly. So let's go around the room. Jazz Palmer, Conservative, welcome to the program. Uh, Bedfordshire businessman and former Metropolitan Police Officer. I'm going to give all of you one minute to um, just go through your basic manifesto, if that's okay, Jazz. If I can start with you in one minute. What are your What are your views? What is your objective? As, uh, would it be as a police commissioner? Well, what I want to bring to this uh, uh, role of a police commissioner is my experience as a former police officer. And uh, I'm local. I have lived in uh, rural Bedfordshire for the last 25 years. I have worked in Bedford for 25 years. I've been a borough councillor. I'm visible and accessible. I run a public-facing business. And uh, that is the experience which I want to bring to this role. In less than uh, 30 seconds. It's fantastic. Uh, Jazz, uh, you have a, a nice picture uh, of your, you on your website with David Cameron. How are you going to convince him not to, take, to make further cuts to Bevacher Police? Well, the cuts have already been set. Most of the public services are facing cuts. So there is no way of getting around it. But what, what we can do is, obviously, there are fundings available. And that would only be done if we provide a good business case to him. And I'm sure, given that... Uh, and also a good business case, we can always get more funding as well. OK, we'll come back to Jazz and back to all our panel, of course, throughout the course of the afternoon. Um, Ollie Martins is uh, from, uh, from Labour. He's at the Labour Party Conference in Manchester. Good afternoon, Ollie. Hello, Roberto. Welcome to the programme. You're a former service coordinator with Victim Support and a member of the Territorial Army. And just like all the other c the candidates, I will give you 60 seconds to outline your view, your policy, and what it would be as a police commissioner. Well, what I want to say is that in the last three days, in each of the last three days, we've seen an event that is pertinent to the election on the 15th of November. Yesterday saw National Police Memorial Day reminding us of the risks the police take on our behalf, and I'd like to just take this opportunity to pay tribute to the sacrifice of PC John Henry, because of course it's not just here in Manchester that police officers have lost their lives in the line of duty. On Saturday, we saw a riot by drunken members of the so-called English Defence League who pelted the police with bricks and bottles, demonstrating once again why the EDL candidate has to be about the least appropriate person running in this election. And on Friday, there was a meeting of the Bedfordshire Police Authority, which proved a further reduction in police strength of 100 officers and 56 PCSOs as a direct result of the Tory-led government's 20% police budget cuts. So a vote for my Tory rival, as we've just heard, will be a vote for an apologist for these cuts and sweeping privatisation of our police, whereas a vote for me Time's will up. be a vote for someone who Time's will fight up. these cuts. Uh, Alan Martins, you, you mentioned uh, Kevin Carroll. We'll come to Kevin very shortly. He's from the British Freedom Party, which is different to the uh, party you suggested. Um, you oppose privatisation, Ollie. Does that mean you would end all outsourcing at Bedfordshire? I certainly won't go in for this sweeping privatisation that we have on the table at the moment. So the G4S proposal, if I'm elected as police commissioner in Bedfordshire, that will not happen. 
Okay. Uh, Linda Jack, Liberal Democrat, former youth worker and local uh, councillor, of course, in one minute or less. What would be your... Um, what would you deliver as police commissioner? Um, the primary purpose of the state is to protect its citizens, whether that's through your army or your police. And so the primary purpose of the PCC has to be to keep people safe, has to be to be a voice of the people of Luton and Bedfordshire, to hold the police to account, but equally important, I think people must seem to be forgetting this, that it's police and crime commissioner, and that's about cutting crime and that you can do that through detecting prosecuting and preventing it and i'm very interested in how we prevent it but in the middle of all this we have to make sure that witnesses and victims are properly heard in terms of me doing that job i'm the only candidate that's lived and worked in bedford bedford luton and mid beds i've been a candidate in mid beds and luton um and i'm also i've also been a councillor as you said in in bedford my expertise is in being a voice for others um, and I think that's the most important role, bringing others together to actually make a difference. For example... Time's up, Linda, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, your party <laughs> has said, Linda, that it doesn't want to see policing become a political football. So why are you standing as a Lib Dem? Because your party's opposed to all this. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one of the reasons we're opposed to it is because we don't want it to be a political football. And be for that very reason, I think electing a Lib Dem, especially somebody like me who's very independent, means that it won't be. The fact of the matter is the, the people have voted for a government that has has that in its manifesto so consequently we have to live with the consequences of that if this is what people want then they deserve a choice and they should actually have a liberal choice as well as any other choice kevin carroll from the british freedom party um carpenter co-founder of the english defense league and vice chair of the british freedom party kevin in 60 seconds or less what would, what would you deliver as police commissioner uh, well, Firstly, I'm, I'm born and bred in Luton Town, and I'm passionate about my town, I'm passionate about my country, I'm passionate about my county, um, I love the people within it, um, I've spent all my life fighting for one reason or another, for the citizens of Luton Town. Um, what I would deliver is getting the police back to being the police, getting them away from politics. That, I mean, I'm just a humble carpenter, and I'm, I'm like every other mum and dad out there, and I have exactly the same fears and concerns as they do. They're just worried about their children's futures, and they just want a safe and prosperous future for their children and their grandchildren. And that's all I want. And I, but I want a level, equal playing field across the board, no matter where you're from, no matter what your skin colour, your, 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 your religion, anything. A level playing field. And I I want a serious crackdown on crime and I want the criminals to be the ones that are in fear, not the decent people living in their homes being hassled by uh, uh, antisocial behaviour or by drugs or by theft or by violence and knife crime on a zero tolerance on knife Time's crime. Up. You get caught carrying Time's a knife, up, you Kevin, go to jail. I've got to stop you there. Um, and uh, Ollie alluded to this. You're from the British Freedom Party, which is the political wing of the EDL. Yes, it's a, it's a separate entity, but it, it, it's hand in glove. OK. Uh, last year's EDL march in Luton, Kevin, cost £1 million. 1% of the entire policing budget on one day was spent on, on that march. Would you be seeking to prevent another march happening? It, it depends whether the um, uh, radicalisation of uh, uh, Muslims and terrorism and extremism is dealt with. If it's not dealt with, then we shall see a, a return to Luton due to the fact that Luton Borough Council, Labour run Luton Borough Council, um, ha has failed miserably and the prevent scheme has failed miserably. The people of Luton and Bedfordshire as a county have been let down miserably. Um, Luton and Harmony has failed miserably. Um, but 50% of that demonstration, at each demonstration, what you forget to mention is that the left... Uh, the Labour Party, the left and the violent UAF, they are 50% of the, the counter-demonstration. So what they're saying is it's OK for them to demonstrate against us, but not, allow, not good for us to demonstrate to express our okay. democratic right. Now, that is fascism. They're okay. saying it's OK for them, but not for us. I'm sure we'll come so back th to that topic. So the cost was split okay, each I'm time. sure we'll come back to that topic throughout the course of the uh, programme. It's a democracy we live in. Uh, Sandra Glenn, independent, thank you. Uh, made it through the traffic. You've worked in corporate business and the volunteer sector. You've volunteered as an independent advisory group member for Bedfordshire Police. In 60 seconds or less, what would you deliver as police commissioner? Well, I'm taking the challenge to meet the Home Office's mandate to bring more third sector community champions and social enterprise into the policing. My mandate is about confidence, concerns and complaints. <sighs> And to, to raise the confidence of the of the people of Bedfordshire, because there are lots of, of lots of fear of the police at the moment, um, a lot higher than it is at the moment. Because unfortunately, with the recent 
um, death of Delaney Brown, it's come to my attention that people are concerned. They're not sure whether the police are doing the job that they're meant to be doing. Uh, as an independent advisor, I'm critiquing the police on a daily basis, but I realise that I need to be more in touch, and we need to be more in touch with everybody's fears. I'm going to open a hotline for people to complain and to learn about how to complain, to raise the service by improving it by the public. The public will have a direct ownership of being more engaged with the police. But I'm also here to cut crime. But I'm also here to um, in improve the youth the youth association with the police so we could actually inform young people about their Your rights. Your time's up, Sandra. You. Uh, you're the only independent in, in this race, Sandra. Mm -hmm. How hard is it going to be to convince people that you're a serious candidate? Not as hard as you think. Um, everybody I've spoken to, a lot of the organisation I've spoken to, uh, I think it's the right thing for an independent voice to be in that seat, to be free of the politics, but also to take on board the crime panel. The police and crime panel will have an oversight of that role. So you'll be feeding into councillors and, and other... It's majority council around. It's about 10 members of councillors and two are independent. So if you've got an independent lead feeding into that panel, you've got a better chance of having the police needs and the people's needs met. This is Three Counties Drive. And Bucks Travel. BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, I've just had a story come through that the M25 has a lane closed clockwise. That's between Junction 22 at St Albans and Junction 23 at the A1M. There's been a breakdown there. The A507, that's reportedly closed eastbound between Baldock and the A10 at Buntingford as the farm vehicles drop some bales of hay onto the road. And Lower Luton Road in Batford, that's still very heavy between Pickford Hill and Lane Lane. Now, looking at public transport, Chilton Railway services still have those delays of around half an hour between Amersham and High Wycombe to London Marlebone. That's because of a signalling problem. And Greater Anglia and Stansted Express services are also running with delays now because of a signalling problem at Chesant. Amy Solomon, BBC Three Counties Radio. See Beds, Hearts and Bucks motorway cameras on demand. bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Every Monday to Saturday from 12, Nick Coffer. I'm very embarrassed about it. You know, it's a big step for me to actually ring in today. But it's when you're going very fast on the motorway, I feel that everything's very big. I sound silly. I feel like I'm almost going to fall off. It is so bad now that I think I'm worried that I'm going to cause an accident. Nick Coffer. But it is that wonderful thing that when you start to talk, and as you say it, it starts to make sense. And there was that lovely moment where you said to Christine, you know, I've just, I've just suddenly thought of something, and I hope that's just a, a starting point uh, to helping you find a, a way forward. Nick Coffer, Monday to Saturday from 12 on BBC Three Counties Radio. Roberto Peroni, BBC Three Counties Radio. 18 minutes past six o'clock. This is the first of our three special debates with the prospective police commissioners tonight for Bedfordshire. And joining me this evening, uh, Jazz Palmer, Ollie Martins, Linda Jack, Kevin Carroll and Sandra Glenn. Uh, and the question is what a, a police and crime commissioner can do. They can appoint the chief constable of their force and sack them. They can set out local policing priorities, report annually on the progress, uh, set out the force budget and community safety grants uh, and the cost of these elections. Let me tell is around £125 million. Election Day is on the 15th of November. The, the prediction is, uh, candidates, that we will witness the lowest turnout in British political history come 15th of November. Whoever wins, whoever, whichever five of you wins, will you actually have any mandate to go and deliver? Jazz Palmer. Well, we live in a democratic country where we have two choices. We either vote or we don't vote. And all the people who go out and vote, I believe we have a 100% mandate on that. I would like everyone to go out and vote, but that's their choice if they don't want to vote. But the point at the moment is that we are making progress. We are making people aware of these elections. We are making people aware the importance of having a police and crime commissioner. And once people are aware of that, forget about the negative which the press is sending well, it's, out. It's not negative. I mean, this is serious political concern suggesting we'll have the lowest turnout in British political history. It, it, it shows at the moment that the public don't care. Well, you're predicting something that hasn't happened. It doesn't work like that. Now, my view is, and I have been on the doorstep, that people are interested. It's just that they weren't aware of it. And as the, the time goes by, we've still got 45 days to go. People will be interested in what's going on. Okay. And I'm sure they will come out and they will vote because it affects them. Linda Jack, Liberal Democrats, so 45 days to go. Do you think the public will be enamoured of this election and turn out and vote in big numbers? I think one of the big problems is that the, the argument for police and crime commissioners by the Tories was that it was in order to give people a say. Um, 
So I find it extraordinary that they're not prepared for people to have election addresses to go to every house in the country. And the idea that everybody has got access to the, um, the internet is fanciful and, and that they would use it for that, I think, is really wrong. So I am concerned about the turnout. Um, as, as Jazz said, I think it's really important that people get out and vote. The danger is in Bedfordshire that we could end up with somebody who believes that people like me should be sent to the gallows and wants to bring back the death penalty. I don't think that that is what the most, most of the people in this county want, so what I would urge them to come out. I would say that they want somebody that is committed to actually c cutting crime, to making them safe. Um, to listening to them and, and taking okay. their concerns but if there seriously. Is, if, there is a, if you are returned as, as the winning candidate and, and there is a, 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 a shockingly low turnout, how are you able to, able to justify your position? Well, you know, we have a choice. People can go and vote or not. And if they choose not to vote, that isn't a vote against. It is just they're not isn't voting. It? Well, no, because if they want to vote against, they need to get themselves down to the, uh, to the polling station to vote. So we are a democracy. And actually, the people have the responsibility about whether they turn out or not. Ollie Martin's uh, Labour. Um, Ollie, the predictions are the lowest turnout in British political history. Uh, it, there are a lot of questions being asked of why the 15th of November has been chosen, the middle of the winter, of course. Um, will you have a mandate if you're returned? Well, it is a, it's a ridiculous and a disastrous time of year to hold an election. Uh, but what I'm finding is that while there isn't much awareness of um, the election itself, there is a lot of awareness of police cuts and the fact that we are losing 185 police officers uh, since 2010, uh, the fact that we're losing practically half of the PCSOs in the county. People are very concerned about that. And I think that if there is, uh, if in the next 45 days people make the connection between the police cuts and the opportunity that the 15th of November gives them to send the government a message about those cuts, then I think we could be pleasantly surprised by the turnout. And when you go door to door, Ollie, um, talking to people about this, are they interested? Yes, they're certainly interested in police cuts um, and the opportunity to send that message to the government. Kevin Carroll, British Freedom Party. Um, if there is a low turner as predicted and you are returned as the police commissioner for Bedfordshire, how will you be able to justify that your role is actually merited because people have voted for you? Well, why shouldn't it be justified? I've just as much opportunity and right to be commissioner as everybody else in this room. I'm a Bedfordshire citizen. I'm a proud Bedfordshire citizen. Um, I'm, I'm well liked. I'm well known. Um, you know, there's no reason that, that I would have to justify myself because I'm a concerned adult. I'm a parent. Um, I, I've got every reason in the, in, in the world to But be. if the turnout is low and the, the general public in Bedfordshire just haven't gone to the polls, they've just shown that they're not interested in the role of police commissioner. I, I don't think that will happen. I, I, I genuinely believe that people will vote for me because I believe, I genuinely believe that people are just sick and tired of career politicians like Wally, who's been a, uh, a career politician all his life. He's bounced from Liverpool as councillor twice in Neverley and Belvale Ward. But, but, He's been a councillor, a deputy leader of the Labour Kevin, Party in Liverpool can, and Derby. Whoever's, this is just a job vacancy but, yeah, to these politicians. Who, 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 they which, don't care about but whichever, the people in, Whichever in one of you I is do. returned, isn't that a political position in itself? Well, you know, if, if, if I'm in a political position, then everybody else is. I mean, everybody in this room nearly is, is standing for a political party. Jazz, this lady next to me for Liberals, I'm with the British Freedom. But it still doesn't revoke from the fact that I'm a concerned Bedfordshire okay. citizen. And I have every right to be a crime commissioner, and I would do a good job. And I'm an extremely formidable individual, and I won't shirk away from the, the, the subject matter that scares everybody, or the problems. I, I just don't do that. I'll grab the bull by the horns, and I'll take that job on, and I'll do it, well, what, do it well, what is the subject matter that scares everybody? The Every, uh, uh, main subject matter that scares everybody is dealing with terrorism and extremism within Bedfordshire, um, across the country. Um, people can, I, just, can I just throw it to the other panel? Um, Jazz, is that the biggest concern when you go door to door? I don't think that's the no, first thing on the biggest mind. concern, but I'm saying it's a major concern. Well, when you, OK, Kevin, when you go knocking door to door saying, I want to be the police commissioner, vote for me, what is the one thing people are telling you? It's, what do they it's want? mainly fear of violent crime, knife crime, about their children going out at night and their parents worrying about whether their children are going to be attacked or stabbed. The, 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 the problem with knife crime is that people getting caught with knives are not going to okay. jail. Uh, Sandra Glenn, let me bring you into the conversation. When you go door to door, mm -hmm. what are people's concerns? What are they telling you? They're mostly worried about antisocial crime, antisocial behaviour, drug use, and it's mostly petty, petty burglary. And it's, very, um, it's minor compared to major in Bedfordshire as far as I'm concerned. Ollie Martins, who's uh, joining us live from the Labour Party in conference. Uh, Ollie, what do, what do people say to you? 
Well, they're concerned about antisocial behaviour and they're also very concerned about visible policing. And of course it's visible policing that is the main thing that we are losing with the police cuts and the fall in police strength that we're currently seeing in Bedfordshire. Linda Jack. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Sandra, actually. I think a a lot of what concerns people is what affects them. And for most of us, we're not affected by serious crime. We're affected by petty crime. Um, So we have to take that seriously. And that's why I think we need to invest in... um, a strategy that deals with keeping young people away from from crime to start with. The issue around um, terrorism being the thing that, that scares people the most. Obviously, if people are you know like me used to go on the tube every morning, it's something that's in the back of your mind. But but to demonise a whole religion because of the actions of a few. Has it's, well, I'm afraid I'm afraid if you read no no if you read if you read what the EDL and the British. Uh, um, Freedom Party say, that is what they have said, and that is your complaint against the police, and and your co-leader, your your co-leader, sorry, your co... No, no, I'm not. I'm a mother. You you can all have your say. Linda and Kevin. Kevin, Linda and Kevin, you can both... Linda, Linda, no, you will both be able to have your say, but I would ask you to be... To remain calm. Kevin, I would ask you... Linda and Kevin. I've had three assassination attempts on my Kevin and Linda. I will ask you to remain calm and we will have the debate. Okay. No, Linda, no. Let me let me just stop you there. Let me just stop you there. Linda, I will I will cut you off. Let me stop you there. Okay. Let's move on because time is limited and there are a lot of points we want to get to. Can I get back to the issue of policing, which is why you're here? Kevin Kevin, you will Linda and Linda and Kevin, I will cut you both off. I, Will you please stop? Because we need to move on. OK, please just stop. Let's get back to the real policing issues which matter to people. Alf Hitchcock, Chief Constable of Bedfordshire, has said more and more officers will be carrying tasers. Do you want your police officers to be armed? Sandra Glenn. N- not particularly with tasers, no. I've met somebody last week who... They put, you get a lifelong scar after you've been tasered. And I don't think people are aware of the effects of a child watching a parent being tased. Okay. I will need to be brief on this point. Yeah. Um, Kevin Carroll, do you want the police to be armed? No, I don't. Um, I don't even like tasers. I, um, I mean, tasers, in, in the seven years, eight years, the Americans have been using tasers. I think there's something like uh, 360, 370 individuals have died the next day from heart attacks, including f- uh, professional footballers, uh, American footballers. It's a 50,000 volt shock straight through the heart. Okay. You know, Ollie Martins. It's not good. No, it's it's not the way that we want uh, that we want policing to go. Uh, but I do fear that uh, if we are um, if we're moving away from neighbourhood policing that's based on being preventative, and if we're moving towards reactive policing, where you know it's back to the time of Z cars, um, and you know that's going to result in a falling confidence in the police, and I think it's going to make it more difficult for the police to do their job. So I think if that trend continues, then you know it is going to be something. Um, it, it, they're going to be in situations more often where they're going to have, where they're going to feel the need to resort to tasers, okay. and that's that's why we need to do as much as we can to protect neighbourhood policing and stop these cuts. Jazz, would you want your police officers to be armed? Well, as uh, a former police officer, yes, I do support uh, uh, the police to carry tasers. But as always, we always give an opportunity or a chance to police officers to opt out if they don't want to. But given the circumstances of the last two weeks and also the, the, the fear and the danger that the police officers face, especially when they're on their own, a taser is a damn sight better than getting shot. Linda Jack. Um, I, I agree that I wouldn't want the, the police to be armed, and I think there's a lot of serious qu- questions about tasers. Um, the police themselves don't want to be armed, and I think while the police themselves don't want to be armed, we should respect that. This is Drive in 45 days' time. You'll be asked to go and vote for the elected police commissioners for Bedfordshire. This is the first of our three special debates with the prospective police commissioners for Bedfordshire. And joining me in our three-county studios tonight, uh, Jazz Palmer from the Conservatives, Bedfordshire businessman and former Metropolitan Police Officer, Ollie Martins, 
He's uh, with Labour. He's at the Labour Conference in Manchester. Uh, Linda Jack from the Liberal Democrats, from a youth worker and uh, council work, and youth worker and local councillor. Uh, Kevin Carroll from the British Freedom Party. Carpenter, co-founder of the English Defence League and vice chair of British Freedom. And Sandra Glenn, independent. And Sandra's worked in corporate business and the volunteer sector. And she's volunteered as an independent advisory group member for Bedfordshire Police. We are here to talk about Bedfordshire Police in. Uh, yeah, primarily, of course, that's our, our sole concern this evening. Uh, there are cuts of 20% coming to the uh, police service of Bedfordshire, having to make savings of £20 million by 2015, the loss of 96 officers and 56 PCSOs. The chief constable says he is massively worried about funding post-2015. He's talked as well about stressed staff. How will you ensure that there'll be more policing on the streets, not less policing on the streets? Sandra Glenn. Well, um, I've talked about the precept and I've asked people, the members of the public don't know what precept is, but I've gone out and asked them if they would be prepared if, if the, 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 the public good was put in place and the people were able to have more of a voice to improve the service, would they be also um, happy to add their bit by, by increasing the precept by 6%? So I've asked for an increase on, for three years of 6% of, of 6 per year. And that means that's an average of eight pounds a year per household. If you've got a bandy house, the portion of the um, council tax that goes to the police is 150 pounds on a bandy. Eight pounds is not a lot to ask for. No, it isn't. You may ask, but I don't think you're going to get it. Why not? I've asked people and they've all said yes. But who's going to pay it? How are you going to structure that? When you vote for me, you're voting for that 6% increase straight to the police. The, the council can't take that away from them. And if you were returned, uh, Sandra, as the police commissioner, what would you t how, would you, how would you work with the chief constable to make sure that is delivered, apart from the increase in fund? I mean, what would you do? Well, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of writing my plan because I came in quite late. I only came in two weeks ago with a six-week lead in time to research. I've, I've been involved in the policing plan and the information for the year because I'm chair of the independent advisory group. I would work with him to look at the existing budget to see if he could keep some of those offices so we don't have to lay them off, keep some of the PCSOs so we could keep the visibility. And they've actually agreed with me that they could actually maintain some of those jobs. OK. Um, Kevin Carroll, if you returned as the police commissioner on day one, what would you say to the uh, chief constable? How would you ensure that the public see the police officers on the beat, as it were. They actually saw the visible line, blue line. Well, that, that's something that, I, that I'm really keen on doing. I, I want to return back to the police being the police, the bobbies on the street, you know, walking down the road. People don't feel safe when they just see a, a police car zooming past at 25 miles an hour. You know, they want to see bobbies walking down the street, they're out cutting the grass on a summer's afternoon. They want to say hello to, they want to see a face, they want somebody tangible to say hello to, to talk to, to, to make them feel that they're in their, in their area. And, uh, um, you know, the, the burglars and the thieves and the vandals and the antisocial whoever, you know, they'd have to be on their toes and they'll be scarce because they'll know that bobbies are on the beat in that area. Um, now, to get this, obviously there's 6,000 police officers being struck uh, across the country, 100 from Bedfordshire. 96 officers and 56 yeah. PCSOs. Yeah, it's shocking. And... Um, you know, so I'd be looking to make savings, for, not on the police frontline services, somehow we need to try to make it on the backroom services, whether we have to bring in volunteers to do the paperwork, so police officers are not bogged down with um, bureaucratical paperwork, they probably spend half of their shift in the back rooms doing paperwork, which is, which is a complete waste of time. Let's get the police back to being the police where they solve crime and chase criminals. Let me go across back to you, Ollie Martin. Ollie's at the Labour Party conference for us in Manchester. Yeah. Ollie, um, some severe cuts coming to uh, Bedfordshire, and the Chief Constable is, he said he's massively worried about funding post 2015. He's talked as well about stressed staff. How would you ensure we get more police officers on the streets of Bedfordshire, not less? Well, the Chief Constable is absolutely right to be concerned um, because Bedfordshire, uh, for historic reasons, um, has long been one of the most effective, uh, cost-effective police forces. And when you consider that over 80% of the police budget uh, relates to the cost of employing uh, police officers and police staff and paying their pension contributions, um, you quickly see that when you're facing, when a police authority and uh, police commissioners are facing 20% cuts, there is very little room for manoeuvre except from reducing the police strength. So the reality is that unless this government reconsiders the scale of those police cuts, there's very little that incoming police commissioners can do. And that's why it's so important for people to use the opportunity of the 15th of November to send this government a message about police cuts. Linda Jack, Liberal Democrats. 
I think there's a huge issue about the cuts. I know that um, the, uh, the Chief Constable is very worried about future cuts and I think that, and I would urge all of us as, as candidates that we maybe even did a joint letter um, to uh, the Home Office, to the Police Minister to say that this is not on because it is the most important role of the state is to protect its citizens and if it can't do that effectively then it has to be challenged. Um, and I really think any candidate, not just in Bedfordshire, anywhere in, in, in the country needs to be challenging that. I think, you know, what Sandra said about the potential of, of looking at the precept has to be a consideration. But it's very difficult at a time when people are finding all the costs going up then to ask them to pay more. We should expect that I think a lot of the problem comes down to actually trying to cut too far and too fast. And therefore, it's leaving us exposed. Okay. And we can't allow that just to happen. Just I even the poorest person, though, if they'd be prepared to pay £8 per year to help the police to keep Bobby's on the beat and they said yes they would okay Sandra. would all five of you be prepared to sign a letter uh, as Linda has suggested to outline to the Home Secretary and to the uh, police minister policing minister that actually Bedfordshire has a special case and funding needs to be protected or at least to reduce the level of funding. Would you all sign the letter, Sandra? Yeah, I would. Oh, yeah, yeah 100%. Kevin, so I'd, I'd sign the letter. Absolutely. OK. We've got yeah. to do everything we can for the police. Uh, Jazz Palmer, um, you're, you're returned as police uh, commissioner uh, come the uh, middle uh, of November. Uh, as it stands, uh, £20 million savings by 2015. We've heard what the Chief Constable has had to say. How would you ensure we get more policing on the streets? This, I, there is this notion, of course, politically, that you could uh, a, a tinker with the backroom and somehow release staff from the backroom and put them onto the front line. Well, you spoke about 20 million there. 12 million has already been achieved. That leaves you with about 7 million over the next three years now. Now, you hear all about uh, raising precept and all that, but what they don't seem to understand is that you've got something like police crime panel they can oppose that. You cannot set a precept without the permission of police and crime panel. You talk about cuts, and my Labour opponent has been shouting about the 20% uh, cuts and all that. The last Labour government had approved one billion pound cuts, which was 12%. And they had approved 365 million cuts in overtime. They had approved nearly 600 million pound of collaboration. Okay, that's twenty percent. Jazz, that, that's politics. I, I, I always find that whenever poli people talk politics and blame a, a previous administration about something, uh, people just kind of turn off. What would you do? For, forgetting what Labour may have done in the previous administration, what would you do? Well, my experience is, and having spoken to police officers and also to the chief constable as well, what people want is not bobbies on the beat, not walking. Because your average criminal nowadays is not yes, walking. He's driving around in a Subaru. No, he, they don't. If you live in Bedfordshire, you would know. If you work in Westminster and live in Luton, you probably would not know that. But I'll if you live in Bedfordshire yes. for 25 years, you do know that the people want to be safe. And if they are safe, they'll feel safe as okay. well. Uh, and it's not the be-all or the end-all. If, okay. if they didn't see a policeman for five Chance, years, if they don't get burgled... That's what I want people people to to, to feel. But not to be burgled. Let me just move on. Let me just move on. But all the people I talk to, they want visible policing. That's the thing that provides them with reassurance, confidence, and that they feel deters crime. And that's what they want. And that's what we're losing. Does that prevent crime? No, it doesn't. If you look at the statistics now, five percent less police force, six percent less crime in the last 12 months and those statistics are in Jazz, front of you thank you let me move on it is coming up to you, 19 minutes to no no let me move on it's 19 minutes to seven o'clock you're all standing for police Wally commissioner for on that one for i've no idea who wally is but i'm sure uh, we'll find out later on um how would you make the police more responsive to local needs bedfordshire is a very diverse community Sandra, will you have the ear of the wider community well, I have the year already. Um, Linda was wrong. I am also Bedfordshire wide. I create social enterprises and I have had people go out with myself and I've gone from Dunstable Downs to Potton to Turvey all over the place. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with and people are familiar with me. So I would actually say that Central Bez, Bedford Borough and Luton have to be dealt with as three distinct policing styles. They're not just one. So you'd have one set, set of um, ways of running the looted area because that's very different, it's very intensive, but it's much calmer, somewhat different when you go to Bedford and Central Beds with the rural area. And you understand the whole mm -hmm. county? Yes, I do. I've been, I'm born here, I've walked the beat, I've been in Dunstable Downs from zero to I'm now 53. I know it very well and I'm passionate about Bedfordshire. Ollie Martins, do you understand the people of Bedfordshire? 
Uh, well, I've spoken to hundreds of them over the last few months, and that's but why... You're not from Bedfordshire, though, are you, Wally? That's why I know that when I say people want to protect the visible policing, I'm speaking with some authority, because that's what so many of them Not from someone me. that's from Bedfordshire, though. Uh, Ollie, I well, think what the hell? What, what on earth does that matter? Well, I'm just saying. Well, you, hang on, hang on. Let me not, address, let, let me address the question, Kevin. Ollie, do you understand Bedford? You, you're, clearly, you're not from Bedford because it's one of the points the other other candidates are making. So, do you understand? You, you may not be from Bedford. Do you understand the needs of people of Bedfordshire? Yes, of course I do. I mean, first, I first moved to Bedfordshire in 2004. I was born in Cambridge. I've lived all over the place, and I've been involved in politics for a long time. So, yes, I do know about translating the uh, aspirations that people have well, into the public and services. And it's a job Kevin, let him speak, long, please. I've got a long Wallet. record of public service, and I'm very proud of that. And I also spent eight years working for victim support. OK, Jazz, please stop, Kevin. Uh, Jazz. Do you understand the, pe- the needs of the people of, Bev- of Bedfordshire, the whole of the county? I don't think anybody can uh, do or, or uh, can understand uh, the, the people of Bedfordshire better than I can. 25 years I've been living in the village and I have run businesses in Bedfordshire for the last 25 years. I've been a Bedford Borough Councillor for three years. I have run businesses in Bedford for the last 15 years. So I do understand the urban and rural. Okay. I don't have to be told. I experience them. You're a former, I think you're, if I'm right in saying, you're the only member of the, the, uh, the, only one of the five candidates who, as a former police officer in the Met, why did you give up? Well, I gave up to help my family in business. And I had a five-year sabbatical given to me because I left with an exemplary conduct. My experience ranges from not only public disorder of the Brixton and Tottenham riots, minor strike. I served in royalty protection. I served in motor vehicle crime squad. I was the first one to serve in neighbourhood watch schemes as well. So I did have a very, very good five-year service, and okay. I'm proud of that. Let me ask the, the other panel members, Linda, Ollie, Kevin, and Sora, does he have an advantage over you because he's a former police officer? But no, I do, not at all. I do think, I think we've heard a little uh, bit of radio history there because this must be the first time that an ex-copper has taken to the airwaves to say that cutting the police cuts crime. Uh, Linda Jack, um, does he have an advantage because he's a former police officer? I don't think so. I mean, you know, if, if you took that to its logical conclusion, you wouldn't have any council leader or a mayor, as, as Bedford has, um, that hasn't got experience of the services that they're responsible for. The most important job that the person who is police and crime commissioner has is to represent the people. And it's being good at representing people that's more important. OK, can, can learn can, the rest. Let, 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 let me ask you, Linda, uh, Linda, if you were returned as commissioner for... Uh, for Bedfordshire, and the EDL came up and said, we want to stage a march uh, through, an annual march through uh, the county at Luton. Would you, would you say yes or no? I think providing everything was in place, I mean, I do believe that people in freedom of speech and people should have a right to have their say. I think that the EDL should think very carefully about where they sent them. They uh, staged that march. I was on active service in Northern Ireland. I know what happens when you divide communities. And that's what worries me when EDL's Kevin says... there's no division. Come on. That what worries me. Kevin says he loves all the people of Bedfordshire. Yeah, but I that do. I'm passionate. Muslims. I'm born and bred in Bedfordshire. Well, but that doesn't so about right. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, Kevin, you're returned as Commissioner for police in Bedfordshire and uh, a Muslim group will come to you saying because they feel threatened or they feel uh, undervalued and they want to march and stage a protest. Will you allow it? I'd allow them if it's, as long as it's within the realms of freedom of speech and democracy. If they're, if they're spitting out hate speech or, or, or vile hate speech towards soldiers like the homecoming parade, then no, I wouldn't allow it. Um, that's, it's religious of hate speech or, as they do. But listen, I, I've got no problem with Muslims. This is where Sarah's si- going completely wrong. Muslims are human beings. My problem problem is with militant radical Islam, okay, extremist let's, Islam. Let's so take some travel news. I this, wouldn't this have those drive. people. Beds, hearts and bucks travel. BBC Three Counties Radio. This is Drive in 45 days' time. You'll be asked to go and vote for the elected police commissioners for Bedfordshire. This is the first of our three special debates with the prospective police commissioners for Bedfordshire. And joining me in our three county studios tonight, uh, Jazz Palmer from the Conservatives, Bedfordshire businessman and former Metropolitan Police Officer, Ollie Martins, 
He's uh, with Labour. He's the Labour Conference in Manchester. Uh, Linda Jack from the Liberal Democrats, from a youth worker and uh, council work, and youth worker and local councillor. Uh, Kevin Carroll from the British Freedom Party, Carpenter, co-founder of the English Defence League and vice chair of British Freedom. And Sandra Glenn, independent. And Sandra's worked in corporate business and the volunteer sector. And she's volunteered as an independent advisory group member for Bedfordshire Police. We are here to talk about Bedfordshire Police in uh, yeah, primarily, of course, that's our, our sole concern this evening. Uh, there are cuts of 20% coming to the uh, police service of Bedfordshire, having to make savings of £20 million by 2015, the loss of 96 officers and 56 PCSOs. The chief constable says he is massively worried about funding post-2015. He's talked as well about stressed staff. How will you ensure that there'll be more policing on the streets, not less policing on the streets? Sandra Glenn. Well, um, I've talked about the precept and I've asked people, the members of the public don't know what precept is, but I've gone out and asked them if they would be prepared if, if the, 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 the public good was put in place and the people were able to have more of a voice to improve the service, would they be also um, happy to add their bit by, by increasing the precept by 6%? So I've asked for an increase on, for three years of 6% of, of 6 per year. And that means that's an average of £8 a year per household if you've got a bandy house. The portion of the um, council tax that goes to the police is £150 on a bandy. £8 is not a lot to ask for. No, it isn't. You may ask, but I don't think you're going to get it. Why not? I've asked people and they've all said yes. But who's going to pay it? How are you going to structure that? When you vote for me, you're voting for that 6% increase straight to the police. The, the council can't take that away from them. And if you were returned, uh, Sandra, as the police commissioner, what would you t how, would you, how would you work with the chief constable to make sure that is delivered, apart from the increase in fund? I mean, what would you do? Well, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of writing my plan because I came in quite late. I only came in two weeks ago with a six-week lead in time to research. I've, I've been involved in the policing plan and the information for the year because I'm chair of the independent advisory group. I would work with him to look at the existing budget to see if we could keep some of those offices so we don't have to lay them off, keep some of the PCSOs so we could keep the visibility. And they've actually agreed with me that they could actually maintain some of those jobs. OK. Um, Kevin Carroll, if you returned as the police commissioner on day one, what would you say to the uh, chief constable? How would you ensure that the public see the police officers on the beat, as it were. They actually saw the visible line, blue line. Well, that, that's something that, I, that I'm really keen on doing. I, I, I want to return back to the police being the police, the bobbies on the street, you know, walking down the road. People don't feel safe when they just see a, a police car zooming past at 25 miles an hour. You know, they want to see bobbies walking down the street, they're out cutting the grass on a summer's afternoon. They want to say hello to, they want to see a face. They want somebody tangible to say hello to, to talk to, to, to make them feel that they're in their, in their area. And, that, um, you know, that the burglars and the thieves and the vandals and the antisocial whoever, you know, they, they'd have to be on their toes and they'll be scarce because they'll know that bobbies are on the beat in that area. Um, now, to get this, obviously that there's 6,000 police officers being struck uh, across the country, 100 from Bedfordshire. 96 officers and 56 yeah. PCSOs. Yeah, it's shocking. And... Um, you know, so I'd be looking to make savings, for, not on the police frontline services, somehow we're going to need to try to make it on the backroom services, whether we have to bring in volunteers to do the paperwork, so police officers are not bogged down with um, bureaucratical paperwork, they probably spend half of their shift in the back rooms doing paperwork, which is, which is a complete waste of time. Let's get the police back to being the police where they solve crime and chase criminals. <laughs> Let me go across back to you, Ollie Martin. Ollie's at the Labour Party conference for us in Manchester. Ollie, um, some severe cuts coming to uh, Bedfordshire, and the Chief Constable is, he said he's massively worried about funding post 2015. He's talked as well about stressed staff. How would you ensure we get more police officers on the streets of Bedfordshire, not less? Well, the Chief Constable is absolutely right to be concerned um, because Bedfordshire, uh, for historic reasons, um, has long been one of the most effective, uh, cost-effective police forces. And when you consider that over 80% of the police budget uh, relates to the cost of employing uh, police officers and police staff and paying their pension contributions, um, you quickly see that when you're facing, when a police authority and uh, police commissioners are facing 20% cuts, there is very little room for manoeuvre except from reducing the police strength. So the reality is that unless this government reconsiders the scale of those police cuts, there's very little that incoming police commissioners can do. And that's why it's so important for people to use the opportunity of the 15th of November to send this government a message about police cuts. Linda Jack, Liberal Democrats. 
I think there's a huge issue about the cuts. I know that um, the, uh, the chief constable is very worried about future cuts, and I think that, and I would urge all of us as, as candidates that we maybe even did a joint letter um, to uh, the Home Office, to the police minister, to say that this is not on, because it is the most important role of the state is to protect its citizens, and if it can't do that effectively, then it has to be challenged. Um, and I really think any candidate, not just in Bedfordshire, anywhere in, in, in the country needs to be challenging that. I think, you know, what Sandra said about the potential of, of looking at the precept has to be a consideration. But it's very difficult at a time when people are finding all the costs going up then to ask them to pay more. We should expect that I think a lot of the problem comes down to actually trying to cut too far and too fast and therefore it's leaving us exposed okay. and it, it, we can't allow that just, to just very quickly, I asked even the poorest person though if they'd be prepared to pay £8 per year to help the police to keep, keep bobbies on the beat and they said yes they would. Okay, Sandra. Mm -hmm. Would all five of you be prepared to sign a letter uh, as Linda has suggested to outline to the Home Secretary and to the uh, police minister, policing minister that actually Bedfordshire has a special case and funding needs to be protected mm -hmm. or at least to reduce the level of funding. Would you all sign the letter, Sandra? Yeah, I would. Oh, yeah, yeah 100%. Sign, I'll sign the letter. Absolutely. Okay. We've got yeah. to do everything we can for the police. Uh, Jazz Palmer, um, you're, you're returned as <coughs> police uh, commissioner uh, come the uh, middle uh, of November. Uh, as it stands, uh, £20 million savings by 2015. We've heard what the Chief Constable has had to say. How would you ensure we get more policing on the streets? This, I, there is this notion, of course, politically, that you could uh, tinker with the backroom and somehow release staff from the backroom and put them onto the front line. Well, you spoke about 20 million there. 12 million has already been achieved. That leaves you with about 7 million over the next three years now. Now, you hear all about uh, raising precept and all that, but what they don't seem to understand is that you've got something like police crime panel they can oppose that. You cannot set a precept without the permission of police and crime panel. You talk about cuts, and my Labour opponent has been shouting about the 20% uh, cuts and all that. The last Labour government had approved £1 billion cuts, which was 12%. And they had approved 365 million cuts in overtime. They had approved nearly £600 million of collaboration. Okay, that's twenty percent. Jazz, that, that's politics. I, I, I always find that whenever poli people talk politics and blame a, a previous administration about something, uh, people just kind of turn off. What would you do? For, forgetting what Labour may have done in the previous administration, what would you do? Well, my experience is, and having spoken to police officers and also to the chief constable as well, what people want is not bobbies on the beat, not walking. Because your average criminal nowadays is not yes, walking. He's driving around in a Subaru. No, he, they don't. If you live in Bedfordshire, you would know. If you work in Westminster and live in Luton, you probably would not know that. But I'll if you live in Bedfordshire there, yes. for 25 years, you do know that the people want to be safe. And if they are safe, they'll feel safe okay. as well. Uh, and it's not the be-all or the end-all. If, okay. they, if they didn't see a policeman for five Just, years, if they don't get burgled... That's what I want people people to to, to feel. But not to be burgled, and not to be Let me just move on. But all the people I talk to, they want visible policing. That's the thing that provides them with reassurance, confidence, and that they feel deters crime. And that's what they want. And that's what we're losing. Does that prevent crime? No, it doesn't. If you look at the statistics now, five percent less police force, six percent less crime in the last 12 months, and those statistics are in front of you. thank you. Let me move on. It is coming up to you, 19 minutes. To no, no, let me move on. It's 19 minutes to, to 7 o'clock. You're all standing for police Wally commissioner Roy for... On that one. for I've no idea who Wally is, but I'm sure uh, we'll find out later on. Um, how would you make the police more responsive to local needs? Bedfordshire is a very diverse community, Sandra. Will you have the ear of the wider community? Well, I have the year already. Um, Linda was wrong. I am also Bedfordshire wide. I create social enterprises and I have had people go out with myself and I've gone from Dunstable Downs to Potton to Turvey all over the place. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with and people are familiar with me. So I would actually say that Central Beds, Bedford Borough and Luton have to be dealt with as three distinct policing styles. They're not just one. So you'd have one set, set of um, ways of running the looted area because that's very different, it's very intensive, but it's much calmer, somewhat different when you go to Bedford and Central Beds with the rural area. And you understand the whole county? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. I've been, I'm born here, I've walked the beat, I've been in Dunstable Downs from zero to I'm now 53. I know it very well and I'm passionate about Bedfordshire. Holly Martins, do you understand the people of Bedfordshire? 
Uh, well, I've spoken to hundreds of them over the last few months, and that's why... You're not from Bedfordshire, though, are you, Wally? That's why I know that when I say people want to protect the visible policing, I'm speaking with some authority, because that's what so many of them Not from someone me. that's from Bedfordshire, though. Uh, Ollie, I think well, what the l- hell? What, what on earth does that matter? Well, I'm just saying. Well, you, hang on, hang on. Let me address. Not, let let me address the question, Kevin. Ollie, do you understand Beth? You, you're, clearly, you're not from Beth because it's one of the points the other other candidates are making. So, do you understand? You, you may not be from Beth. Do you understand the needs of people of Bedfordshire? Yes, of course I do. I mean, first, I first moved to Bedfordshire in 2004. I was born in Cambridge. I've lived all over the place, and I've been involved in politics for a long time. So, yes, I do know about trans- translating the uh, aspirations that people have well, into the public and services. Job like Kevin, no, let him speak, long, please. I've got a long Wallet. record of public service, and I'm very proud of that. And I also spent eight years working for victim support. OK, Jazz, please stop, Kevin. Uh, Jazz. Do you understand the, pe- the needs of the people of, Bedf- of Bedfordshire, the whole of the county? I don't think anybody can uh, do or, or uh, can understand uh, the, the people of Bedfordshire better than I can. 25 years I've been living in the village, and I have run businesses in Bedfordshire for the last 25 years. I've been a Bedford Borough Councillor for three years. I have run businesses in Bedford for the last 15 years. So I do understand the urban and rural. Okay. I don't have to be told. I experience them. You're a former, I think you're, if I'm right, you're the only member of the, the, uh, the, only one of the five candidates who, as a former police officer in the Met, why did you give up? Well, I gave up to help my family in business. And I had a five-year sabbatical given to me because I left with an exemplary conduct. My experience ranges from not only public disorder of the Brixton and Tottenham riots, minor strike. I served in royalty protection. I served in motor vehicle crime squad. I was the first one to serve in neighbourhood watch schemes as well. So I did have a very, very good five-year service, and okay. I'm proud of that. Let me ask the other panel members, Linda, Ollie, Kevin, and sort of, does he have an advantage over you because he's a former police officer? No, I do, not at all. I do think we've heard a little uh, bit of radio history there because this must be the first time that an ex-copper has taken to the airwaves to say that cutting the police cuts crime. Uh, Linda Jack, um, does he have an advantage because he's a former police officer? I don't think so. I mean, you know, if, if you took that to its logical conclusion, you wouldn't have any council leader or a mayor as, as Bedford has um, that hasn't got experience of the services that they're responsible for. The most important job that the person who is police and crime commissioner has is to represent the people. And it's being good at representing people that's more important. Okay, can, can, the let, let, me, let me ask you, Lind, uh, Linda, if you were returned as commissioner for, uh, for Bedfordshire and the EDL came up and said, we want to stage a march uh, through an annual march through... Uh, the county at Luton. Would you would you say yes or no? I think providing everything was in place. I mean, I do believe that pe- in freedom of speech and people should have a right to have their say. I think that the EDL should think very carefully about where they sent that they uh, staged that march. I was on active service in Northern Ireland. I know what happens when you divide communities, and that's what worries me. When EDL's Kevin not saying, any division. Come on, that what worries me. Kevin says he loves all the people of Bedfordshire. Yeah, but I that do. I'm passionate. I'm born and bred in Bedfordshire. Well, that passionate about, about you know, no, I'm I'm just as passionate Kevin, about freedom of speech and me, democracy. Let me ask you yeah, the question, yeah. Kevin. You're returned as commissioner for police in Bedfordshire and uh, a Muslim group will come to you saying because they feel threatened or they feel uh, undervalued and they want to march and stage a protest. Will you allow it? I'd allow them if it's, as long as it's within the realms of freedom of speech and democracy. If they're, if they're spitting out hate speech or, or, or vile hate speech towards soldiers like the homecoming parade, then no, I wouldn't allow it. Um, that's It's religious of hate speech or, as they do. But listen, I, I've got no problem with Muslims. This is where Simon's Sar- going completely wrong. Muslims are human beings. My problem problem is with militant radical islam okay, extremist let's, islam let's so take some travel news this is three counties drive those people this is drive bbc three counties radio 12 minutes to seven it's the first of our three special debates with the prospective police commissioners uh, for beds hearts and bucks tonight we're focusing on bedfordshire and uh, joining me in our three county studio in no particular order it's just the way they're sat around the table is jazz palmer from the conservatives linda jack liberal democrats ollie martins from labor who is joining us live from the labor conference in manchester kevin Carroll from the British Freedom Party and Sandra Glenn, who is an independent. Um, Ollie, I'll come to you. Um, if you were returned, would you want a police service or a police force? Uh, a police service uh, that's there to uh, serve the people and maintain the Queen's peace. 
Kevin Carroll, police service or police force? Oh, oh, well, a touch of both, you could say, but um, I want the police to, to go back serving the public. Like I say, I want the police to go back to being the police, not a political animal for whoever's in number 10. This is where we're going wrong. The police are being politicised and, and having to get bogged but down with political that what, correctness. What, what would happen if you became... Whoever becomes commissioner, it is a political role, isn't it? Well, I don't think so. I think you're there to serve the people, the public, you know, and I, and I love the public. I love the people. I, you know, that's that simple as that. I am a man of the people, always have been. And and I believe the police force are there to serve and protect the public, not to do the politicians' bidding. Sandra Glenn. We have a service. We have a police force in name, but it is a service. It has great leadership. It has a lot of fantastic officers. There are just one or two that may need to learn to toe the party line, if, it's, if you want to say that. But do you understand, the, well, uh, panel, do you understand the, difference, the, the differentiation mm -hmm. I'm trying to make between service and yeah. force? Because mm -hmm. yes. force means when a scallywag is trying to nick your car, mm -hmm. the police force turn up and deal with them. That's how people feel, though. They feel that they, in Luton you have people thinking it's a force and then other parts of Bedfordshire you've got a service. It'd be nice to have everybody in Bedfordshire feel that it was acceptable and accessible and the same level that they could actually feel that when the officer turns up, they're going to get the same treatment. But, but do you think the, the public across Bedfordshire want a police officer to turn up on his bike and be friendly, as Kevin suggested, a chat to them and what their neighbours are doing? Or do you expect the, the public to uh, have a police response and deal with the issues they have? After the Delaney Brown murder, they want someone who turns up and is willing to to deal with the issue um there have been issues around that that that, that operation and i would like to see uh, an improvement a police officer needs to turn out there's kevin everyone everyone needs to turn uh, linda jack police service or police force because um, there is a difference yeah absolutely uh, definitely a police service but a recognition that the police have got um a responsibility in order to enforce the law mm -hmm. so that it's the enforcement of a service as opposed to a police force so i do think that change to a police service is really important. You know, the, the police service is part of our community and we need to see them as such, not as other. And I think some of the problems like you've talked about, Sandra, in terms of um, uh, some of the problems there's been with particular um, young people in, in particular have been because they haven't been seen as part of the community and there needs to be more, more of that, um, but not to the extent that it, it means that you just kind of loosen up. Jazz Palmer. It's always been a police force <coughs> and should remain as a police force. We're not there police is not there to just act as social workers. They are there to do a job. And the job is, as you mentioned, to nick the scallywags. Their job is to make sure that they maintain peace, keep peace, detect crime, and then when the crime is detected, ma detected make sure the offenders are punished. They are there to do a job. And it's no different to anybody. You ask any police officer, they will not say it's a police service. It's a police force. How many scallywags did you nick? Did you keep a tally? I can't, I can't even remember how many. There were so many. I, I worked in a very, very busy <laughs> South London. I mean, if we didn't nick anybody for one or two days, we used to go withdrawal symptoms. I think yeah. two, two or three Super in a cold. day. <laughs> will you, I mean, will you, will you all be <laughs> looking... out of touch with policing, because the mediation services now, they have customer services, they go through a great yeah. deal of customer care. It's changed. It's not the way they, it was. Me, but, on but, but, Sandra, hang on. Sandra, is is that, do you think that's what people want? People want that. They want do an they? understanding service. Yeah, they do. Okay, Mark let me give you an example. They want you can, it to be uh, visible, and the problem is that with this scale of cuts and the strength, the police strength that we're losing, it's not going to be visible, and it is going to move away from being of police service to being a police force, and Roberta, that is not that, at that, all what people want. Roberta, that is complete nonsense. The job of the police is to cut crime, and that is what... This government has given them a task. Okay. Let me, let me, cut crime, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me put, 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 let me put something to you. I, I just want to, I just want to test this. I think the public might be interested, interested in this. Uh, about five years ago, uh, I had a car stolen from outside my house, and within a couple of days, the police sent me a leaflet about counselling. Right? I'm not interested in counselling. I wanted the scallywag caught and banged up. How would you have dealt with it? Well, maybe because it he built, it, built, oh, it depends on Ollie, the sort Ollie, of crime. Ollie, the suspect, the Ollie, suspect, shush, suspect, Ollie, shush, the floor, Ollie, be Sandra, quiet. The Sandra, probably Please. came from victims. Shush, oh, Sandra. Say, as, soon as, as soon as you have a, 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 you're a victim of crime, that, that leaflet sent out, as Ollie's saying. I don't want a leaflet. So, victim support. Ollie, shush. Sandra, I don't want a leaflet. You would have wanted to follow up from Sandra the police speaking. to say where, where the car is and how they, how they caught the person. I had to go and find the car myself and recover it myself. I wanted the scallywag who stole it banged up. Didn't happen. Well... Unfortunately, on, your, on that occasion, you had ineffective policing. Okay. It wasn't the police's fault. 
Kevin, would you send out leaflets asking people if their feelings have been hurt? No, I wouldn't send out leaflets. If you, if, if you get your star stolen, your car stolen, I believe that a police officer should attend your residence where you live and at least turn up and say, right, what's happened? And, and investigate. You, you need a police officer, but leaflets um, to see if you need counselling. I mean, that, this is where we're wasting money, squandering money. Now, if there was a violent that's assault... That's victim support, though. Yeah, that's victim support. It's yeah. not the, but but the so police we, officer himself is, trying to detect important. the crime. It Wally, is. hold on Wally, a second. please hold Wally. on. Somebody Kevin. else is speaking. Manners. So, um, yeah, you want a police officer to turn up because that's what the police, and it reassures the public. But you don't want, if it, in the case of a car stolen, a counselling leaflet. You might want some advice about how to go through the, the for getting the crime number and dealing with the insurance people. But you don't want counselling when your car's okay. been stolen. That's ridiculous. Ollie Martins, the microphone is yours. It does depend on the sort of crime. Now, there are crimes that are a lot more serious and have a lot greater impact on victims of crime than car theft and it is important and one of my prior impact one of on my, me Ollie, to be honest with you one of well of course it did but there there can be you know if you're if you're the victim of violence or if you're burgled then the emotional impact can be far greater and then you've also got to think about the impact of when you're talking about serious crime the impact of going to court and how that works and it is one of my priorities given my victim support background is going to be to put the victim far more at the center of the way that the police work how so well, it's, some of it's to do with systems and some of it's to do with just being thoughtful and just understanding the have needs the, of victims. Ollie, has, have the police, with 20% cuts coming, have the police in Bedfordshire got time to deal with thoughtfulness? Well, this is, this is going to be, this is going to be a real challenge, but I think what people want when they are victims of crime is they want to know that their needs are going to be at the centre of what the police do, and it is important that that is the case. I've been a victim of serious crime. Kevin, have tried to murder Ke me. you've mentioned They've it already. To shoot me and I, I'm house. glad you're still here. But Linda Jack, I didn't need yeah. counselling. Um, would you would you send out counselling leaflets? Is, is that the kind of policing you you I envisage? Mean, it's, it's not the police, it's victim support, as everybody has said, that sends that out. Now, I think But the public don't know that. The, the public are, if, if you dial 999 no, but, and say, I have been burgled or my car has been stolen, you're not interested in victim support and all the various yeah, agencies. No, no, you but, want but, the but, but, well. but the thing is that there are some people out who are. I had a, an incident once where I lost my keys outside my front door and I thought they'd been taken out of my, uh, <coughs> out of my um, front door. I, I called the police, said that I'd, I'd lost them if they got handed in. They recorded it as a crime. Well, of course, it wasn't a crime because then I found my keys, but then I still got a leaflet from victim support. So it obviously wasn't very appropriate then. But I think, the, but it's not about police time. It's about victim support. And I think none of us know how we will react. I've been the victim of crime and, and you don't know how you're going to react. And actually knowing that there may be some help for you, if you don't want that help, then that's fine. Okay. You just I'm only pushing you because running out of time. On the Jazz Palmer, we're running out of time. On the individual. Jazz Palmer. I, I think it should depend, uh, depend on the merit, really. And... Uh, I know victim support plays a very, very important role, and we need them. We need them very much, and especially when uh, there's distress and everything else involved in crime. But we should have a common sense approach to that. <coughs> what you mentioned, we don't need to send expensive leaflets and everything else for somebody with a car scratched or, or a car stolen, which has been found later on. But there are far more serious offences where we, we can use that money and energy more, more effectively. Can okay. I just mention that service was provided by a hundred volunteers in yeah. Bedfordshire. So and we appreciate the work of all this. Great. It's a fantastic just be, support. Just before we, just before we end, yeah. and thank you all for coming in this evening, a lot of people will be asking, next week we're talking to the Hertfordshire uh, Commissioner candidates, and the week after that, Thames Valley Police. So Hertfordshire, 8th of October, Thames Valley Police, the 5th Thief, if I may, uh, of, of course. Uh, there has been some debate over the weekend about police uniforms. Some police officers, some police um, chief constables are suggesting we need to go to high-vis outfits rather than the traditional police uniform. Uh, very briefly, Saunders, what kind of police uniform would you envisage? High-vis or the traditional look? There are several uniforms depending on what, what operation they're working with, so I th they're appropriate at the moment the way they are. Kevin Carroll. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's nothing wrong with the police uniforms as it is. I mean, uh, the police have to look like the police as well. And okay. that's what comforts them. Ollie Martins. Well, I mean, if Jazz Palmer gets his way, then they're certainly going to need to be in high-vis uh, uniforms if they want to be seen at all, because there are going to be so few Linda of them Jack. left. Um, I, th I think certainly keep them as they are and then use the high-vis when they need them. Jazz Palmer. Well, I'll make sure, as Ollie said, uh, they're in high vis uh, visibility. At least the criminals will be afraid You don't want to give them a lollipop stick on the zebra crossing, do you? Uh, panel, thank you. Uh, Jazz Palmer, Ollie Martins, Linda Jack, Kevin Carroll and Sordra Glenn. This is BBC Folk Three Kennedy's Radio. Carol.